Folks at home, welcome back to the Crimson Oak Pond. And if you're new to this series, we built this five acre pond over the past year and it took us several months to get all of the dirt excavated and we had to bring in several truckloads of clay. And we also built an island, a dock, and got all the structure in place. And then it took a couple of months to get it full of water. After that, we stocked it with a bunch of bait fish, including bluegills and threadfin shad. And not long after that, we stocked it with these little two inch aggressive bass. And we're going to be giving you an update on them here in just a minute and showing you how big they've gotten. But before we get into that, we've got some exciting news for you all. And we are adding a new member to the Bama Bass family. Liz is pregnant and we decided there was no better place to do a gender reveal than out here at the pond. So they've got it all set up to shoot fireworks and smoke off of the island. And it's pretty simple. If the colors are blue, it's a boy. And if they're pink, it's a girl. <laughs> and at this point, you can see the suspense is killing Liz. And it's a boy. We can't wait to see Sarah and her little brother out here fishing in the future and growing up alongside of these little aggressive tiger bass. I'm sure they're going to make a lot of cool memories out here. And we're extremely excited and can't wait. So one of the projects for today is to set up a holding tank for the bait out here on the dock. And if you missed the last video, we started feeding the fish off the dock. And I want to start this fish feeding routine so the fish will get more comfortable with us. And it's also going to be a way to interact with them throughout the week. And the main reason I'm wanting to do this is because we're eventually going to put in our pet bass, Bonnie and Clyde and Moby. And if we just release them into the pond, they may swim out to the deep end and we may never see them again. But if I keep feeding the fish off the dock, I feel like Bonnie and Clyde and Moby will come up because they're so comfortable with me. And that'll be a way for us to check in on them in the future. So we got this 100 gallon bait well and the first thing I did was add a drain valve on the bottom so we could drain it and fill it up as needed. And I couldn't use a canister filter like we use for our indoor aquariums because they're not rated for outdoor use. So I got this outdoor pond filter and then you also have to use a pump with it. And basically I'm going to put the pump down in the bottom of the bait tank and it'll pump the water out of the tank into the filter and then return the filtered water back into the tank. So here's a quick look at the pump and we're going to get this set down in the bottom. And then I'm going to connect this one inch hose to the inlet of the filter and then another hose from the return back into the tank. And the one thing I really liked about this filter is it has this multi-purpose connection so you can add different size hoses. So I got it connected to the pump but before we connect it to the filter I'm going to drop the pump off in the pond and go ahead and pump about 80 gallons of water into the tank. So while we wait on that to fill up let's take a look at what's going to be added into the bait tank. First up, we got 300 goldfish, and I'll have to say these things are a little bit bigger than what I was expecting. <laughs> but worst case scenario, we'll have a few hundred pet goldfish in the pond. So I'm going to set those in there and let them start acclimating. And next up, we have a thousand golden shiners. And this is what we fed all of our pets throughout the years. They're basically a perfect little bass snack. And I'm 100% confident that we can start feed training some of these bass with these golden shiners. All right, now I'm hooking the inlet hose up. That's what goes to the pump. I think the feeder's about to go off. I hear it beeping. Little piranhas out there. All right, I just got all the fish acclimated. Let's try with the goldfish first. Wow, these guys are pretty big. Man, pretty too. I don't know if the bass will eat these. These may be a tad too big, so we may have a bunch of pet goldfish in the pond. There's one of those black and white and gold ones. All right, next up, the golden shiners, and the bass will have no problem eating these guys. Perfect little bass snacks. All right, got the filter hooked up. I've got the return hose pushed right here above the water, so hopefully whenever it's pumping it back in there, it'll give them some more oxygen. There we go. Worked perfect. 
And today's cookout is brought to you by HelloFresh. And if you live out in a remote location like I do, it's a perfect fit because they provide all of the meat, vegetables, and ingredients for a full cooked meal directly to your doorstep. And it's very simple. You just hop on their website, pick a few meals out that you want delivered that week, and they have a lot of options. And for this week, I chose Louisiana-style tilapia, beef tenderloin, and some grilled onion cheeseburgers. And the thing I really like about HelloFresh is they send out these cheat cards with each meal, and it will have all of the ingredients listed on this side. And then you flip the card over, and it'll have step-by-step -step instructions. First off, it tells you what kind of pots and pans and utensils you'll need. And then it gives you step-by-step -step instructions and makes it really easy to learn new recipes. But we're going to go ahead and cook the beef tenderloin tonight. Very simple. We just start out by chopping up all of our vegetables. Then toss the broccoli in olive oil, salt, and pepper. And the beef tenderloin is extremely simple to cook. You just add your preferred seasonings like salt and pepper, maybe a little bit of olive oil to the pan, and cook it to your preference. And now it's almost time to eat, but I'll have to say I'm definitely impressed with the high quality ingredients. And walking through each step of the recipe was extremely easy. So I'm definitely a fan of HelloFresh, but if any of you are interested in trying them out, you can use the link in the video description or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGBAMA September 16th for 16 free meals across 7 boxes plus 3 surprise gifts. And you can customize these meals based on your needs and also save time and money by not having to go to the grocery store. And each meal takes 30 minutes or less to cook. It's tough to beat that, folks. So, mistake number one is not factoring in how high goldfish and golden shiners can jump. There's only a couple inches of a gap right here uncovered on this bait tank. And I've already seen both of them jumping out of that gap. Look at that. That is wild. Man, I did not expect to see that. So now it's time to cover up that little gap. Now it's time to check in on the first bass and bluegill that we caught out of the pond named Tiger and Copper. Feeding sessions are always fun with them because they're extremely aggressive. All right, we're gonna drop him two golden shiners in at a time. He eats them quick. Man, as soon as I dropped him in, both of them in his mouth. Now here's a funny clip where we dropped one of the shiners in and Tiger didn't see it. But watch what happens when he starts seeing its reflection off the glass of the tank. <laughs> he couldn't find out where it was. He is a spitting image of Moby when he was this size. And it's still really cool to see how Tiger will eat the protein pellets. I'm pretty sure he'll eat anything we put in there, but I never expected to see him eating the pellets. All right, now it is time to do a feeding session with the bass, and we've got a full moon tonight, and they should be hungry. So I zoomed in on the moon with my spot and scope, and you can even see the craters on it. That's a pretty cool shot. All right, the green lights are coming on. We got a bucket of the shiners. Now just waiting on the bass to come up. So this is pretty cool. Some bats finally found their way to the pond and are out here eating some mosquitoes. And several months back, I mounted a bat house trying to lure them in because they're really good at eating insects. So I'm happy to see they found the pond. So now it's time to watch some of the highlights from tonight's feeding clips and I've already seen how aggressive Tiger was in the aquarium and now I'm starting to get to see how aggressive the bass are in the pond. But here's an interesting fact about bass that most of you probably didn't know. So bass need to consume 10 pounds of bait to grow one pound. So for an example, each of these bass would need to eat 1,000 bluegills that were one inch long in order to gain one pound. And that statistic is just wild to me, and that shows you why you have to put so many bait fish in a pond that is stocked with bass. And for instance, we put 1,500 bluegill in this pond per acre, and that's also why it's important to have all the different structure, and we need some of those bluegills to survive and spawn throughout the year, and it basically balances the pond out. All of the new forage fish that are produced each year replace those that are getting eaten by the bass. But there are some ponds that the bass are so aggressive you still have to come back each year and add more bait. But one of the things I'm interested in seeing with this pond is if the bass growth rates are higher over a course of a year. 
So bass will only grow when the water is above a certain temperature, and that's why bass get bigger in the southern states than they do in the northern colder states. And with our pond being located in southern Alabama, we have an extended growing season because we have a very short winter. So I'll be keeping an eye on that to see how it plays out with their growth rates. But tonight's feeding worked out just like I wanted it to. You can see I've basically got them swimming right up to me at the dock and eating the shiners as soon as I drop them in the water. So I wanted to share something with you that wasn't really pond related, but it's always been one of those bucket list items. And this year I was fortunate enough to be able to travel out west and film an elk hunt. And not to worry for those of you that don't like hunting, I'm just sharing my experience and basically our camping trip. So we went out to Unit 13 in New Mexico and I'll have to say I was blown away at the beautiful countryside. There are just miles and miles of uninhabited mountains and fields full of flowers and things that we don't typically see down south. And we basically just pitched a tent on the side of a mountain for a few days and went hiking looking for elk. And I'm not sure if we're just lucky or elk are just that plentiful, but we saw them nearly every morning and afternoon. Here was a cool shot of some young bulls hanging out on the side of a mountain about 200 yards away from us. And I'll have to say they were a lot bigger than I thought they were going to be. But basically everywhere you looked, we saw elk. There were a lot of elk hanging out by the roads. We even saw one really big herd that had about 40 to 50 elk in it. And some other unique creatures like jackrabbits. <laughs> we're not used to seeing big ears like that on the little cottontails here in Alabama. But overall, it was an absolutely amazing trip, and I would highly recommend it to anybody, even if you're just traveling out there, sightseeing, mountain hiking. It's just extremely peaceful and another good way to reconnect with nature. All right, it's time to catch a bass. I'm going to try to catch one bass every couple of weeks or so just to check in on their size and growth, and it would be extremely easy today because they have a bunch of bait fish right here piled up in this corner but i'm gonna go over here by the oak throne and try to catch one of the bigger females Got him. little bitty guy big belly on him probably a male but you can see Nice size belly on him, he's been eating good. Pretty colors, that's what I wanted to see. I think it's been females that I've been catching recently. All right, we're out here at the dove field. You can see we've got sunflowers everywhere. The doves are loving it. We got big flocks of them coming through every afternoon. But we're gonna be starting up an old segment that we used to do called the peanut picnic table. Basically, I've got peanuts, pecans, pistachios, and Brazil nuts. We're gonna spread them across the table, see what comes out of these woods tonight. I always try to lure our fox squirrel that we call Foxy out, but most of the time we get raccoons and mice and other stuff. And first up, we had a little spike come by. He wasn't sure if he wanted to commit to eating the peanuts, but then he had to turn around and come back and try them out. And so far, he seems to be the only deer interested in eating off the picnic table. That is until George Jones came along. This is the possum that's been around the farm for the last couple years that we call George. And he gets into anything and everything. And let's just say George wiped him out. And nothing else for the critters to eat tonight. And here's a look at all of the baby ducks that hatched out here at the pond. They learned how to fly, and it's fun watching them fly in and out of the pond each morning and afternoon. And speaking of flying creatures, the dove field's doing great. All of the brown top millet and sunflowers have attracted a bunch of doves, and there are birds everywhere. And while we're still on the bird theme, here's one of those pesky birds hanging out on the dock, trying to eat some of our fish. And his timing couldn't have been better because he was out on the dock right when the feeder went off. That's just one lucky bird. Also, another fish eater is called a kingfisher. And the ducks even started sunbathing on the dock. And after a while passes, 
They'll even start making their way over to the feeder to get a little shade. In here at the cabin at night, I got the dome cameras hooked up to the TV. So I can just hang out here in the living room and watch all the owls out there in the fields, deer, raccoons, and coyotes. So when I was watching through some of our night cam footage, I have to say I got a little bit worried when I saw one of the coyotes slipping up behind one of the owls that we call Hooter. And owls are pretty stealthy and have excellent night vision. Just so happens that the coyote was coming in at the perfect angle. Let's just see how this unfolds. <laughs> Every week I'm scratching my head because the deer and now the owls do not mind the coyotes at all. It's like they're all friends and they all get along and hang out and no predators here. All right, out here at the deer feeder, we got them a mixture of corn, soybeans, protein pellets. Also got a game camera set up right there in the corner. So let's go check out some of those clips from this week. Here's a look from the live feeder cam. The ducks flying in each morning and eat some of these protein pellets and soybeans. And after the sun goes down, the deer come out and this basically becomes a selfie cam. And now it's time to feed Mr. Moby. All right, folks, that is going to wrap up this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button to follow along with the Five Acre Pond Adventures. You never know what you're going to see next. Hope you all enjoyed this video, and we will see you all next time.